scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to receive. And we decree and declare that our lives are changed at the instance of your word. Be glorified tonight. In Jesus' blessed name, we pray. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe, I believe in the power of God. I believe in the wisdom that comes from, through, and by the word of God. And I am convinced that outside of the influence of the word of God no one has a predictable destiny hallelujah the word of God is the surety the guarantee that an individual regardless the current background regardless the current situation the word of God leaves us with an assurance that a man is able to navigate his way to a life of excellence and victory regardless the current situation that means that in your pursuit for a life of meaning and excellence, if you ignore the wisdom that comes from and by the word of God, then there, there, you are only multiplying your seasons of pain. It is not only Satan that causes seasons of pain. Ignoring God's modus operandi, his principle, as far as our advancement is concerned, can multiply our years of pain. So conferences like these are designed to be feasts of light where God himself grants us access to high level spiritual illumination hallelujah by the power of his word and then we are strengthened by that word we are guided by that word we are directed by that word and like pastor so brilliantly shared earlier on when we hear the word we understand the information then we obtain grace to now walk in keeping with that which commits God's integrity. There is no power in existence that sustains the ability to suppress your growth when you walk through this pathway. So I want you to please pay attention. Um, I believe that that which I'll share within the time that we have will add to our spiritual understanding. I am very intentional about seeing that every moment and every opportunity God gives me before his people is well maximized and that you will receive a thought that will guide your Christian experience to make it richer in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So there are many factors that are responsible for the victory of the believer. Principally, the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ as revealed from scripture comes with a destiny defining implication. That means if and when an individual encounters the Lord Jesus Christ, the first port of call as far as the benefit of salvation is concerned is your spiritual life. The Bible lets us know that on account of receiving that substitutionary sacrifice we are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son is that true hallelujah but then it does not just stop at that point 
all the, the faculties of our lives are affected by the implication of this Zoe life. Our minds, our lives physically, and then our destinies. Are we together? So the basis for any believer's victory, the basis for any believer's victory is hinged on that which was done upon the cross. But now we need to understand the dynamics of releasing the power that is resident in this life. This is where I believe many and most believers are, you know, are at a loss as to what to do. So many people claim that which has been finished on the cross and that is a fact. But then the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. That means not having the requisite level of spiritual knowledge can shortchange you from manifesting the, the fullness of the potential. Are we together now? That this substitutionary sacrifice has afforded you. That means you can find any two believers, even mentored by the same pastor, like your pastor, are we together? Exposed to the same spiritual environment. But as far as their Christian experience is concerned, they can be east and west apart as far as results are concerned. The difference is not the love of God. The difference is not the will of God. In fact, the difference is not even the predeterminate counsel of God. The difference is that one person may have accessed in addition to knowing that Jesus died and gave you a life that is superior they have accessed the dynamics of activating that life. Are we together? And are we learning already? So the basis for the believer's victory. I, I say this because we live in a world where the moment you begin to succeed at any level, people want to probe into the basis of your results. And it is important that as a believer, you should be able to defend that which is happening in and through your life. Are we together now? The believer's victory is hinged principally, foundationally upon Jesus and that which has come from his substitutionary sacrifice. But then it does not stop there. Knowing that for a fact does not automatically guarantee a victorious life. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15, and this doubles as a word just to honor your man of God for the many tremendous transformation. I just sat back there watching the, uh, the experience of the people who were interviewed. And almost all of them were attesting to the fact that their lives had been transformed. You find what he's doing in Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. Let's read together. One to read. He says, and I will give you shepherds or pastors according to my heart. Uh-huh. They will feed you with knowledge and an understanding. So every pastor is like a spiritual chef. Are we together? And that the menu is knowledge and understanding. The difference between knowledge and understanding is that knowledge creates awareness. Understanding exposes you to the dynamics of making what you know a reality. It's not enough to know. You must understand. It says in all you're getting, get understanding understanding is a profound spiritual miracle he says then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture hallelujah so we're discussing the subject of exploits what does it take to command a life of exploits in the kingdom what does it take for an individual to transit to dimensions of kingdom exploits that will bring glory to the name of the Lord, dignity to your own life and destiny, and then to help you become a blessing to all and sundry. The Bible says in Daniel 11, for our text, verse 32. Let's look at the B part. Daniel 11, 32. It says, but the people that do know their God, the people that do know their God, he leaves them with an assurance that they will be strong capacity and then number two that they will do exploits 
the people that do know their God, they will be strong and will do exploits. Let's walk through a few other scriptures. Isaiah 8.18. Isaiah 8.18. Isaiah 8.18. It says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and we are for wonders in Israel. If we can have KJV, that's fine. I and the children that the Lord has given me. Your children, your child does not just mean you're human, a human being. A child, your child means anything that is a product of your creativity, a product of your effort, a product of your investment. Your child can be your business. Your child can be the work God has committed. He says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and we are for wonders. That means your life should be an explanation of something about God. Someone who is confused about the dimension of God should be referred to your life for clarity. If there is something about God that I do not understand, God should be able to say, all right, since you read your Bible and you did not get it, look at the life of this man for further explanation. The favor of God should be personified in a life. The mercy of God should be personified in a life. The Bible says in Isaiah 51 from verse 1 and 2, verse 2 particularly, it says, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body. It says, for I called him alone and I blessed him then I increased him. That means in God's mind, Abraham is the portrait of a man who has been blessed by God. That means if God says, I will bless you, don't assume you understand what he said. You have to study Abraham to know how far he intends to bless you. Are we together? When you want to understand the power and the potency of the ministry of prayer, the man that the Bible recommends is Elijah. James chapter 5, when you begin to read from verse 13 down to 18, it says Elijah was a man of like passion. Are we together? And then that he prayed earnestly that there be no rain for a period of three and a half years. Then he prayed again. He was using Elijah to buttress on the fact that the fervent an effectual prayer of the righteous man avails much. That means God's kingdom was so designed, number one, that he communicates a thought through his word and then he finds a people, listen carefully, he finds a people who personify his intent. That means everything God is saying, someone's life should be a healthy capture of it. If God says, I can lift, your life should be so lifted that you become God's reference point in explaining that scripture. I'm saying this because it is prophetic God is going to be doing something in someone's life that your life will literally be a message. You pass a mall and people begin a discussion because you came. Say, have you ever seen God lift a man from nowhere? Say, I have not. He said, that man right there is a testament of the lifting power of God. You see, the mind works based on pictures and visuals. This is the reason why without thoughts, translating to pictures we cannot really understand and assimilate so when god personalizes his his thoughts in men it is to be able to give you a memory of his faithfulness so that you do not forget if by any means you have forgotten that god is faithful when an individual passes you remember we are called living epistles. We should be the continuation of every man's devotional. That means the devotional should not just end with a book and paper. We are living epistles. Hallelujah. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders. Furthermore, the Bible tells us Jesus teaching in what we call the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5. When you begin your reading from verse 13 down to 16, he began to teach the people and he said, Ye are the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. Very powerful information. And salt, you know, serves two purposes majorly. Number one, taste. Number two, preservation. So when Jesus says you are the salt of the earth, that means that your life should give value and dignity to people. Then he now says, but if the salt loses its saltiness, it is good for nothing but to be thrown down and to be trodden underfoot by men. Then he says, you are the light of the world. He likens you to a city that is set on a hill. Are we together? 
Yes. It says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but they put it on a candlestick so that it gives light to everyone in the room. Then he ends verse 16 by charging you. He says, so let your light, let your light. The word let means permit, allow. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father which is in heaven hallelujah are we still together in acts chapter 4 and verse 33 the bible says something interesting i want us to read together in concert when it is projected acts chapter 4 and verse 33 let's read together ready want to read it says and with great power uh-huh of the resurrection and he said great grace was upon how many all all of these scriptures are to prove to you so that you settle it once and for all that a life of exploits is not for some there are things in the spirit that god specifies he gave unto some but there are possibilities in the kingdom that are for all are we together they gave witness of the resurrection and great grace was upon them all. That means every one of us here seated and falling online is a bona fide candidate for a life of exploits. And this is not a cliche. It's in your destiny. Discovered or not, it is in your destiny that you live a great life. Remember the man Gideon in Judges chapter 6 when you read. This was a valiant man with the destiny of a deliverer but he was hiding and when the Lord came to him, he was hiding and God called him by his destiny and his future. Called him a mighty man of valor. And he was hiding. His excuse that he was the least and coming from the family that was the least. God said, that, that is none of my business. This is what I have for you. It's amazing that when God talks to you, he does not consider anything that should be a limitation. God talks to men like he's talking to himself. Are we together? It is in my destiny and it is in your destiny to live a life of excellence, a life of grace, and a life of glory. You need to believe this. If you do not believe this, nothing else you hear that will profit you. I'm telling you sincerely because you can have a self-defeating, limited understanding. You hope that other people do well and you clap. But if you do not believe it as a settled, conf a settled information in your heart, that a life of exploits, a life of excellence, a life that brings glory to the name of the Lord should be the kind of life that I was designed to live. When you have that, then you are ready to kill all the excuses that impede you. Are we clear on that? Praise the Lord. Please shout a loud amen. amen. The next thing I want to communicate is the fact that success, victory, exploits in this kingdom is a product of many components principally like i said earlier on that which jesus did and has done upon the cross but then it is broken down into many dimensions and this respectfully speaking i think is where many people have missed it there are people who claim success claim a life of exploits there are people who pray it there are people who walk it there are people who wish it are we together but there is a pathway designed for an individual to transit from a life of failure, maybe, a life of mediocrity, maybe, to a life of excellence that gives God glory. Until you understand that exploits is ministry, you will not take it seriously. Exploits is not something you choose to do. The same way you have a dogged determination as far as... Um, things like parenting things like loving the lord when you see a life of exploit as a privilege that you can choose or not choose based on your personality if you understand that jesus being glorified depends on the extent of your exploit you will give it the same dedication and seriousness what does god have to gain if i rise what does god have to gain if i prosper what does God have to gain if the whole nation comes to the knowledge of Jesus in and through my life and contribution? 
you need to know that the father is glorified when the sons are glorified john chapter 17 from verse 1 jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven praying and he said father the hour has come he said glorify now thy son that thy son will give glory will bring glory unto you john chapter 15 and verse 8 hallelujah john chapter 15 and verse 8 please give it to us don't be tired of scriptures this is the basis of your confidence john 15 8 herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit that ye bear much fruit someone say much fruit so god is not glorified when you bear little fruit much fruit much fruit Verse 16 of the same scripture says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. The word ordained means to legitimize your operation. I have ordained you that you go and bear fruit. I have chosen you and ordained you. Galatians 1.24 Very, very short sentence, but it's filled with rich and profound truth. It says, And they glorified God in me in my life be glorified be glorified in this church be glorified be glorified you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you thank you that means you're refusing to rise to certain dimensions it's like a book with certain pages missing there is an information locked up in a page that will complete someone's understanding about god your refusal to rise to certain dimensions have robbed a region, a nation, a territory from understanding certain spiritual possibilities. The songs that have refused to come out from your spirit has robbed someone from knowing God deeper. The prosperity you have refused to access, either through religiosity or laziness, has stopped someone from having access to certain things. Every time I rise, I'm adding pages to the book as far as the understanding of God is concerned. Paul would boldly say we are living epistles. Living epistles. Living epistles. That means every time someone is in confusion as to what God can do with a man, as to what God can do with a people, my life becomes an unfolding explanation, an addition to your understanding that you can look at me and learn God. You can look at me and my life becomes a lecture about the faithfulness, the mercy, the kindness, the goodness, the speed. All of the things that are contained in God can be revealed in the saints. But that will only be at the, in, at the instance of a life of exploits. This is very powerful. When I learned this, I vowed a vow that I was not going to be small. Not from a carnal standpoint, not from a competitive standpoint. I realized that my life could capture much as far as the revelation of Jesus is concerned. And I said, the nations under my watch must know Jesus and must see him as clear as my results can produce. If Jesus heals, I will not only say it, I will show it. If Jesus lifts, I will not only say it, I will show it. One last scripture and then I tie a few things. Acts chapter 8, please. Give us verse 5. Acts chapter 8 and we'll begin to read from verse 5. This is the structure of the kingdom. I'm praying that God is speaking to someone already. Shaking away mediocrity, shaking away excuses. And telling you that your refusal to rise is not just a cultural thing. It's not just a tribal thing. You are robbing nations and territories of the opportunity to see Jesus revealed through you. The Bible says Peter went down to Samaria. Philip now went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. I love the next verse. The Bible says, And the people with one accord gave heed unto these things which Philip spake. This is what I want you to see. Hearing and seeing. That is the character of the economy of heaven. You do not only hear. When you hear that God heals, you must see that God heals. He said, Oh, taste and see 
that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord favors. Oh, taste and see that the Lord can turn a man's life around. It is not just to hear. You can taste. There is an experience to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Job said, I have heard of thee with the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see thee. I have gained experience. I know it was the apostle Paul who was speaking and he said, but I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded that he is able. I have tasted of his ability. I know. So there are keys to a life of exploits. I want you to know and I believe that it's in the heart of your pastor for everyone in this church, every believer here seated and the many who are following online that when you access the keys of the kingdom that make for a life of excellence and glory, you will bring much good. There is no man of God I know of who loves Jesus sincerely and loves his people, who does not desire to see them rise and scale heights in life and destiny. The first part of call being your spiritual progress and then it should spill over to every aspect of your life. If you are that person, please shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let me give us two keys for tonight and then we'll pray with the time we have left. There are keys that control exploits in this kingdom and I beseech you by the message of God that you open your heart and your spirit. As much as I have challenged you and painted such a glorious picture, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but not many people will come into the experience of all that I've said because there is a responsibility component to your dealings with God. Are we together now? Yes, sir. There is a responsibility component. And those who are ready to take responsibility to understand the laws of the spirit and to access them and engage them by faith are the people who inevitably will command exploits. There is nothing like luck. There is mercy, but there is no luck. Not in this kingdom. There is favor. But there is no luck. The moment you begin to think in a superstitious way, th that is the realm of mediocres. Champions are people who take advantage of the resources of heaven together with a superior orientation and begin to make tangible, responsible progress in their lives. Mediocres will always use things like background. They will use things like whatever will be, will be. Very well-intentioned statement, but is full of lies and deception. A lie is anything God did not say. A lie is not just what sounds bad. Anything God did not say is a lie. It says, let God be true and every man so when you hear a lie, you know where it came from. It came from men and their philosophies and their, the fabrications that came from their frustrations. For instance, if anybody ever told you that you will never rise above and beyond your current realm, it is a lie because that's not what God told you. The person may be sincere, but it's still a lie. A lie does not come from bad people. A lie comes from men. God is not a man that he should lie. So where does it, lies come from? Men. Motivated by spirits, yes, but largely men. There are things I believe about my life that no one will preach me against it. I have not only believed, it has become my experience. Are we together now? Yes. Jesus himself had the confidence to speak to them with power and to let them know that his origin was not earthly. Can you imagine talking to people who had you were born? They saw you. Some of the disciples, was, they were older than him and yet he would call them little children. Have you any catch? What level of confidence? Where did he derive that conviction from? Hmm. Lazarus was a dead man. They were crying and he said, let's go and wake him. Our brother sleepeth. Look at, look at his philosophy. Look at the construct of his understanding. He comes to a place, 5,000 people... And then he looks, Andrew brings a young lad with five loaves and two fish and he says, that's enough. Save yourself any frustration. He lifts it up, gives thanks and says, go and begin to share. Do you know what would have happened to the disciples if that bread didn't multiply? You know, when you read your Bible, you have to think, widen the scope of your understanding. 
How do you play such games? 5,000 men aside women and children. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. May your life command fearful results in the name of Jesus Christ. That after this conference, you will rise to a level and a dimension that the next time you come to testify is your tears that will do the speaking. Your life would have been so transited in glory and grace that those who knew you before this conference will say, what in the world is this? So God can lift this far. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? The first key that controls a life and a destiny of exploits as revealed from scripture is an experience with God write it down please and I want you to please listen very carefully you need a very deep spiritual experience with God if you are going to rise and excel the kingdom's way you need a deep experience with God very deep experience with God. The God you experience is the God you reveal to your world. The God you experience is the God that you reveal to your world. If you have experienced the similitude of a weak God, that is going to inform your orientation as far as speaking to people about him is concerned. The Bible talks about a woman who was at the well. Are we together now? Jesus comes to this woman at the well and they begin a discussion discussion that started with the issue of water then went to the issue of worship and she said i discern that you are a prophet let me ask you a question that has been burning in my heart and then one thing led to the other finally she gets to know that this whoever he is must be a very great man and the bible says she left her fetcher and everything and ran to the city it was her encounter that gave her that energy, that boldness. Remember, that woman was supposedly an outcast. What would give her the confidence to stand before people? She didn't mind whether they would believe her or not. He said, come see a man. There are statements you only make out of conviction. And the convictions are products of encounters. There are things you cannot say until you have met God. Come see a man that has told me everything I have done. Her witness was so compelling. I'm sure that the people came doubting, but they still came. They came hoping to find a reason against what she said, but they still came. The Bible says when they came, and then they sat and heard Jesus for themselves. Here was their conclusion. They said, now we believe. Not just because you said it, paraphrasing. We have encountered him for ourselves. Let me tell you the truth. The reason why the Christian experience of many believers just looks like um, a, a very shadow experience is because most people have not paid the price to know God. Most people have not embraced the spiritual investment of pursuing his presence until you really know the person you gave your life to and the one who stands behind you. Your confidence in life, the fortitude to dare the limitations of life is a derivative of the depth of your encounter. When David stood before Goliath, Goliath looked at David and said, am I a dog? Israel, is this your best? Saul, shame on you. As a king, you mean out of all the warriors to fight me. I know I will kill you, but respect the person you are bringing to me. And David kept quiet and watched him. When he was done speaking, David said, now you've had your turn, let me speak. He said, listen, let me tell you the truth. You come to me with your spears and your bows, but I come to you in a name. I had an encounter in the wilderness. A name is a weapon then. Ah, that means when someone comes with bow and arrow and all kinds of things, you can use a name. I come to you in a name. And began to prophesy to him how he was going to fall i will use this sling to bring down your head i will use your own sword and i will lift it up and give it to the birds and goliath said you've insulted me enough any part of goliath david's sling hit would have still brought him down because he was already dead james 2 26 is how he died that a body without a spirit is dead the spirit and the priesthood that was behind Goliath was already dead.
is someone learning tonight yes. the depth of your experience with God Moses was Moses had the destiny of a deliverer but not that version of him he had to remain in the backside of the mountain and when the season had come for his prophetic destiny to be activated it didn't just start with a command the Bible says Moses looked and he saw a bush that was burning and not be consumed and he said, I will turn aside to see this great sight. When God saw that he turned aside, he said, Moses, now take off your shoes. For where you stand is holy ground. They began their discussion. He said, look, I have seen the pain and the cry, the affliction of my people by reason of their taskmasters. And I am come down. The Bible there reveals how God comes down. He comes down when men rise up. When men rise up to their responsibility, God has come down. I am come down. Moses, now you stand. And when he equipped Moses, he sent him. Moses said, ah, 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 ah. don't make me a fool in front of Pharaoh. Who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me? I have heard the instruction, but I need to know the instructor. Who is speaking? Don't send me with an instruction alone. I need to know my confidence should not just be hinged on the instruction. What is the guarantee? And he said, that's a good question. I am that I am. I am that I am. He said, go and tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you. When Moses stood before Pharaoh and said, thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. Pharaoh laughed and he threw his rod Moses would have been discouraged but his confidence and his staying power was derived from his experience can I tell you my Bible says if you turn aside in the day of adversity it is because your strength you need to learn where we find strength in this kingdom it's in his presence the presence of God is the place of exchange please listen a life of exploits does not just start with vision you can have all the vision in the world. You will soon learn that it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. There are many visionary people who have not taken one step out of the cave as far as destiny is concerned. Because except the Lord builds a house, the Bible says they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it but in vain. That it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow, but that he can give his beloved sleep hallelujah are we together now vision is powerful but all those things are secondary you need an encounter with God an encounter with God creates conviction an encounter with God swallows of fear it gives you the audacity look at me please you see when you when you explore life and destiny just from a physical dimension there are too many variables that sustain within themselves the power to bully your confidence away are we together someone will use your background and that alone has victimized you someone will use your father's problem a problem he caused before you were born and you will still have to suffer it remember our man who was sick who seen that this man was born blind him or his father there was something jesus taught them that the sins of the father can bear consequence even on the children we live in a world where people use all kinds of parameters to bully people out of a place of confidence you don't look like it you don't belong to this group you are not this tribe you are not this person you don't you are not affiliated you've not gone to this and that and we have all kinds of modern credentials that we demand from people to present before they are accepted as far as the world is concerned you need an experience with god that is deeper than the ignorance of men to be able to stand tall even if alone Many believers do not have the staying power to push through until the gates of destiny is open. And it is because they do not know the one who sends them. Ask Pastor Godwin when he left Lagos coming to Abuja. Nobody wrote anything and signed it. That as soon as you arrive, just know you'll be happy caught seeing me. And even if there's someone like that, the Bible already told us how mundane the guarantee of men is concerned. Even though well-meaning, well-intentioned, 
A man can say, I will help you. And he sacks that night. It's one thing for him to have integrity and then have capacity. Is someone learning now? They looked on to him and the Bible says their faces were lightened. Please hear me. For someone, by reason of this conference, you need to shut down. You have known many things in your life and God is not one of them. You know how people give visas. You know how people give uh, connections abroad. You know how people connect you to this minister. You know how God, you don't know God. But the people that do know their God. There are many of us who can make any and everything happen for people. But they do not know God. I know how to connect you to the minister of so, 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 and so. That's wonderful. I hope you know that every destiny helper does not know he's a destiny helper. He is made to be a destiny helper. Are we together? Man of God, all it takes for a great ministry is not a church and money. <laughs> it's a joke. You will need more than a sermon. You will need more than a good auditorium. You will need more than a sincere heart. Many have sustained these things and are still frustrated. It takes an experience with God. For some of you, you need to pause because you are running and the doors are not opening. Go back and say, God, we need to talk. You are sending me to a people. Do, you see, let me tell you this. The knowledge of God is powerful. As much as we criticize Jonah, there was something Jonah knew about God. Jonah ran away not just in disobedience. He knew that God was a merciful God. And he said, God, i rather run because I know that when a man's rebellion is prolonged, it will be prolonged beyond the boundary of mercy. And judgment is what follows. So Jonah was, he used the, his knowledge of the nature of God to make sure that that imminent punishment upon Nineveh would happen. And God rebuked him and said, Jonah, go back. And Jonah said, I know what you would do. As soon as Jonah preached and they started repenting, he was angry. He was not, he was angry because he said, no, this is unfair. There was something about the nature of God he knew. That the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He is slow to anger and rich in love. What do you know about God that gives you confidence in the face of situations? Do you know he's a restorer? That will give you hope. Don't say I got born again at 45. Uh, no, 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 no. There is something about the knowledge of God that gives you confidence. There's nobody to help me. Apostle, you may say, find strength. God is a master at handpicking people anyhow. Even if it means a fish giving you coin. He's that determined to make sure that you do not face embarrassment. God, why me? Is the language of those who do not know him. Mm -mm. Because, let me tell you this, in the economy of God, there are many things that carry the semblance of evil, but is God's secret way of hiding your breakthrough from the eyes of those who will abort it until it manifests. So many things you are casting and binding is actually God walking. And he said, what are you doing? You're not knowing how I walk is making you pray against things that are the answer to your prayer. Be careful when you ask God for favor. He may take you to the prison. He looks at a woman and says you are highly favored. You thought the next thing that will happen to that woman is a recognition by Pilate and so on and so forth for national honor. That's what happens to people who are favored. And the next thing that happens to that woman is a plethora of controversies. Beginning with her husband-to-be. From where is this pregnancy coming from? He said, let me tell you sincerely, I am innocent. I only met a spirit. A spirit? Do I look like a child? Does a child pay dowry? A spirit? God had to intervene and say, Joseph, listen, 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 listen. Don't be afraid. What is in this woman is of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. You need to interpret life from the lens of your knowledge of God. 
let me tell you there are many lamentations that are unnecessary they are not a proof of the absence of god's might they are just a proof of your not knowing him properly are we together now when you know a man who is kind and benevolent and he tells you come to my office your knowledge of what he's able to do will give you the same power even if you are seated there after 12 hours he'll come out and say i'm so sorry our attendees are no no problem sir you are tired and complaining and yet you are no problem look look how people now please don't don't feel bad eh? i'm just saying this from a nice heart look how people queue in front of embassies right now all across nigeria and africa any embassy at all even one the ones that were quiet everybody's just queuing there why and they can endure that pain because they know the potential of a visa stamped in your passport there has to be something that sponsors your staying power our weakness is proof that we do not know something about god every time god demands that you are patient there is a compensation plan at the end of it if you know this about god you will laugh and rejoice even while you are standing in the midst of storms he says the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of something about god you do not know is the reason why you are crying anyhow i know whom i have believed and i'm persuaded i'm persuaded i'm persuaded Apostle, you don't know my problem. I'm in a financial crisis right now that even if I receive five years salary, it will not pay it. I just want to kill myself and take... Um, the same energy it takes to kill yourself is the same energy you require to lie down quietly and say, God, you created me. The Bible says, if you've been evil, know how to give good gifts. Are we together? Two people can go through the same situation. But one would take advantage of his knowledge of God and scale through it as if the devil does not exist and the other person will remain there. Do you know what it meant for the three Hebrew boys to stand in front of Nebuchadnezzar and speak harshly to him? Oh king, we are people of honor, but on this matter we are not careful. Now, the character of faith that is derived from encounters. He says, our God will deliver us. However, if it does not come let it be known to you and god said this is what i'm talking about uh, before they arrived there the fourth man was already there the fourth man did not come into the fire the fourth man was only revealed in the fire he was always there lo i am with you he didn't say lo i am coming i am with you and the lord walking with them the consciousness that you are not alone if you insult me you insulted two people I may keep quiet but the other person will not keep quiet if you favor me you bless two people me and the one who backs me i may not be able to do much as a person but the benevolence of the one who backs me will surprise you that's why he says i will bless them that bless you i will bless them that bless you not them that bless him for blessing you they have also done something to me next time you come and bless your man of god and god opens up doors know that that seed it was two people that received it here men received but in the realm of the spirit someone was honored by what you did too an encounter with god my greatest secret today ladies and gentlemen let me tell you my greatest secret i submit to you is not prayer it's not fasting it's not word study as important as these things are my greatest secret today is the strength and the depth of my encounters with God. This is what has given me the staying power. There is something I know about God that cannot be explained in a sermon. There is something I know about God that cannot be explained in a song. There is something I know about God that cannot be explained by a lecture. That is what sponsors the audacity and the confidence. I read my Bible and I believe everything I find there. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. When I read that about myself, I believed it. That it shall come to pass if I diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. To do, observe and to do all that he commands me this day. That I will be exalted above all the nations of the earth. And that these blessings will come upon me and overtake me. Believe me, I believe it. Joshua 1 and verse 8. 
that this book of the law shall not depart from out of my mouth but that I will meditate upon it day and night and be careful to observe and to do all that is written therein that I can through that act make my way prosperous and that I will have good success I believe it Genesis 17 and verse 6 I will make you exceeding fruitful he said and I will cause kings to come out of you and that nations will come out of your loins. I will not lead a mediocre people. It's a covenant through an encounter that produces that understanding. There is no man who sustains the ability to end my life before my time because I am bound by a covenant. What do you know about God that gives you the stamina? Apostle, how are you sure you will have long life? Honor your father and your mother in the Lord that it shall be well with you and that your days will be long. Number one. Number two, I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing, but I advise that you choose life. Number three, I shall not die and leave to declare the works of the Lord. The question is, am I spending my life declaring the works of the Lord? These are the weapons that sustain my longevity. It's not brain work. I won't die. Many people have said that kind of thing. Why do you believe you are going to prosper? The Bible says, let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually that the Lord be glorified which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Zechariah 17 and verse 1, I believe, cry yet saying, thus saith the Lord, my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad and I shall yet comfort Zion. The Bible says, ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9, that though he was poor, yet for your sake he became rich, that you through his poverty he might be rich. Deuteronomy um, 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 8.18 Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth power. What is the basis of your confidence in this wicked world? My uncle, I heard stories that you'll be appointed next week. Please be careful. Woe to him that puts his strength in a man. God uses men, but he does not teach us to depend on men. He uses men as tools, not sources. There is only one Lord. There is only one faith. There is only one baptism. Abba we call men Abba as a token of our communication of God's responsibility to them but let me tell you the truth there is only one man who is one God really source sustainer provider defender the God of heaven so you can have a big project that requires one billion five billion and all you have in your account home and abroad is 10,000 naira and someone laughs at you and says listen let me tell you if I were you I will reduce disgracing myself by writing this vision and announcing that one day that company will come to pass what do you think is the basis of the confidence of those who do exploits in the kingdom there are no guarantees in life now they looked unto him and their faces were lightened. He's the basis of my confidence. I truly believe him. Listen, I want you to take this time all through this conference. Thank God for all your business plans and everything. There is a place for that. I hope that tomorrow we'll be able to touch on that. Are we together? But first things first. Every other thing derives its value from your encounter with God. There is something that happens to a man when you truly meet God. When you truly meet God. There are things that God told me through the encounters I had with him. They become and they even remain an anchor to my life. He told Joshua, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. I said, Lord, for naming me Joshua, it meant that that scripture was for me. And I believe it. I do not believe that there is any nation that can reject the investment of God's grace upon my life. It's not pride. My apologies if I sound arrogant. It's the truth. I do not believe that I will ever lack people to rise and stand 
to support and defend what I represent because the basis of my encounter and my confidence directly with God and even through scripture is that the Lord gave the word and great was the company of them that published it. What is the basis of your confidence? Why do I believe I would do well in Abuja? Because Abuja is FCT? No. Every city has gates. And when the gates are opened, the city is open. Doesn't matter the pride of men. Focus on the gates being opened. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Is that in your Bible? And be ye lifted ancient doors. That means there are people who can be in a city for 20 years, yet in the realm of the spirit, they are outside the city. Somebody will come and stay in their house and prosper in six months and they have been there in 10 years and never have a plot of land because they are not really in the city. Just because your physical body came into the region does not mean you are there. Are we blessed? If God speaks now and says, I am about to bless 12 people to represent the 12 years of this church, I am going to pray for the remaining 11 people because one position is already taken. I am confident of the investment of God's jealousy upon my life. It is a primer. It's an activator of passion. God does not just love me. He is jealous over me. Jealousy is a deeper dimension of love. Jealousy is not bad though. It was just used by wrong men. Bible said God is a jealous God. It is jealousy that makes you protect what is yours. Without jealousy, you are not motivated to protect what is yours. If I touch your phone, you will look at it. What is taking your eyes there? Jealousy. Are we together? If you find someone come to drag your child, will you just laugh and say, that's all right, whatever you are doing with him, bring him back later. No, jealousy will make you stand. Ah. God of vengeance has won my battle for me. God of miracles has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. He's won my battle for me. My rewarder has won my battles for me. My restorer has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. Listen, this is the mystery that makes small people like us look great. It's not that our sufficiency is in ourselves. Look at me, this is all of me. Look at your pastor, this is all of him. Ah, but standing behind us is one with terrible jealousy over us. The Lord my lifter has won my battle for me. My restorer has won my battle for me. I don't know what you know him as. My wisdom has won my battle. Not my brain, no, him. He's my wisdom. My lifter has won my battles for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man has won my battles for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man has won my battles for me. I want you to leave this church tonight with confidence. When people look at you and say, What happened? You finally got in the job, say, No, I will not rejoice like that over a job. I found something something greater than a job thank god for that blessing but this is more than uh -uh. the bible says the kingdom of god is like a man who was looking for a pearl and when he found one he sold everything he had to buy the whole field and remain there please hear me Believe me when I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that there is nothing my God cannot do. There is nobody he cannot lift, including you. Hallelujah. The first thing God told the fallen man is who told you? Who told you? Where did you hear this from? I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. He said, who told you? 
everything you believe today came from somewhere culture has a voice yesterday has a voice your past has a voice the devil has a voice demons have voices paul said there is as it um, many voices and that none of them is without signification today if you hear his voice there are many voices some of you are about to do great things for the kingdom and the voice of yesterday says are you are you aware you will be the first to do this in 120 years of your family and you can draw back when they met a storm they said let us go to the other side jesus said and the bible says a storm of wind came the same energy it would take to go back was the same energy it took to remain and to press on jesus said no there's no going back we will calm the storm please hear me i came tonight to charge us that the believer's advantage is not just in grammar and speakings there are ordinary men who do not have the comeliness to be desired as far as you know there's a place for mastery and all of these things we'll discuss some of these things but let me tell you first things first i don't care what you know until i see who you know because pharaoh will say who send you not what are you saying pharaoh's interest is not what you are saying pharaoh let my people go he said who sent you i want to know the who before the what thank god for information there are people who can be ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth it's time for you to settle with god and say father i'm tired of being confident today i hear pastor's message and i'm jumping and at the face of every challenge i start asking questions that is a symptom of the absence of conviction when you have malaria there are symptoms when you have typhoid there are symptoms and a consultant can look at you and with digital precision just looking at you and even without putting some he just sees you and says oh i see the problem you need an injection you need these drugs you need to rest and you need this one take fruits you've been eating too much of this and like word of knowledge yes sir how do you know you think he was playing for that 20 years he started with theory but he had to stand before a dead body then another dead body then another dead body then bodies that were alive he stood so long until he became one with his knowledge a theoretical god cannot give you the stamina for the days that are coming thank god for the god of pastor godwin but he must become your god through experience Thank God for the God of Joshua Selman. But he must become your God. I know whom I believe. That you can look at your child and say, Lord, I remember when I had an encounter, you told me that my womb will only produce kings and queens. This one that my child is already going to the police station at age 13. I invoke the blessings and the benefit of my knowledge with you. He said, present your cause. Bring forth your strong reasons. Don't sit down and keep lamenting sociologically. It does not solve that problem. When Isaiah in chapter 38 came to Hezekiah, we're wrapping up now. And he said, Hezekiah, you know me. I'm a seasoned prophet with integrity. Put your house together. You are not going to survive. He said, thank you. I respect you and I honor you as touching your office. Be on your way. There are times that you need to close the door against genuine people and be alone the bible says hezekiah turned his face to the world and said lord remember remember there is something i know about you remember my love for you your covenant with me huh. it was david that knew god through and through i'm sure god wondered said, what do i do with this man when God wants to punish him, he will now begin to sing. He will sing his offense to God. And after singing his offense, you say, but I know you are a merciful God. Only the living can praise you. And God says, that's right. So, so if you kill me now, what benefit? What a negotiator. Negotiated his relevance and he remained there. Hallelujah. When you know God, you will know that your prayers with God are stored in vials. You will know that you're giving everything you do. 
there was something that the book of Esther revealed to us about the character of God. Mordecai helped the king, but he was not rewarded. Many of us would have started lobbying Haman and say, Haman, help me and talk to the king. And Haman says, me that is planning to kill you. Okay, I've heard. And he will carry the book of remembrance and burn it. But Mordecai said, no. I know that every time you help a man and he forgets you, the justice of God will not leave him at peace. The Bible says that night could not King Ahasuerus sleep. He said, bring me the chronicles. And they opened it and found where Mordecai saved his life but was not rewarded. He said, who is in the chamber there? And his aides he asked, anything been done to this man? He said, no. He said, who is there? And they brought Mordecai. What should be done to so, so, so and so man? To know that it was God that was behind that. He didn't mention the name of the man. So Haman said, who else? And he used his greed to suggest a lavish blessing. And he said, make sure none of this word fails. Do same to Mordecai. I'm prophesying to somebody here. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. The one who helps men to rise. Tonight, God is opening the book of remembrance concerning you. Hallelujah. Granting you access to superior dimensions. We do not rise by mistake. We do not rise by luck. The deeper you are with God, the higher you are to rise. Architecture has taught us that. When they're about to build a skyscraper, you don't just start laying the block on the ground. Sometimes they would dig deep the size of a, a, a normal flat. The same distance, it goes down. A tree that rises high will first go down, go down, go down. The Bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. He does not wait for rainy or dry season. He's found a permanent source of supply. The Bible says which yields his fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. I came here to challenge you tonight. Pastor has already given us a very powerful foundation. As powerful as all you have heard me say is and are, it will not profit you until you are angry enough to say, I stop the excuses right now. I must go and cry. Some of you need to wake up in the night and play songs of worship and say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Give me a token of your presence that becomes my confidence. Ask any great man in this church your leaders here and every other person they will tell you stories of their journeys and a point came where nothing physical looked like it and they had to resort back to the voice of god when you see the other side of men's results you will think they had guarantees from the start not even jesus had any guarantee <clears throat> Jesus kept prophesying and speaking that I would die and resurrect. At a point, he himself wanted to negotiate. Father, if it be possible, I said, no, nevertheless. I was confident. Hear me, man of God. Hear me, businessman. Hear me, gentleman, young lady. There is nobody that the Lord cannot lift. Rather than sitting down admiring people and getting jealous and getting angry and wishing people bad to be a consolation to your current experience, God is showing you a way out that there can be a superior way in the spirit. Job said there is a path which no fowl has seen, that the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. Hallelujah. I traveled somewhere and back my, my home place, and I saw people that I used to know many years ago. Nothing has changed about them. Same anger, same jealousy. The only thing is that they've become worse versions of themselves. Not knowing that it was in their destiny to become great. But a deep experience with God. Please hear me. Anybody who makes you see God as a necessary luggage is a dangerous person. Run away from that person. Not at these end times. Anybody who makes you look like your time with God is a time of waste. We live in a sharp, sharp generation. God, I'm busy. Wait for me. When I make money, I can have a house with AC and then I'll, I'll find out what you are trying to tell me. No. Except the Lord builds the house. I repeat. Except he watches over the city. His treasure house is 12 years today. 
as a testament that God has watched over his inheritance for this long. Can I tell you the truth? God is the only guarantee we have. Every other thing we hold on to has historically and biblically been proven to fail. Men, they will fail. Intelligence, it will fail. Your energy, it will deplete. But they that wait upon the Lord. Is that not in your Bible? That even the young men will fall. The youth will utterly fall. The young men will be weary. But they that wait upon the Lord. He said, has thou not seen, has thou not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. That he is no, not weary. He does not get, um, you know, um, his strength does not deplete. There is no searching of his understanding. He says, they that wait upon the Lord. That means the way we run is to wait. Every time you see a man waiting, find out if he's upon the Lord. If he's waiting upon a man, there might be trouble there. If he's waiting upon his mind, there might be trouble there. But if he's waiting upon the Lord, I show you a man who has found the technology to access speed and greatness. We waited to be here. There are times, some of you are still waiting. For three, four, five years, it looks like the last thing God told you is the last thing you have heard him say. Let me lend my voice to the voice of your father to tell you wait it profits to wait upon the Lord every time you wait upon the Lord you are moving if you don't move God will move time to catch up with you but by all means there must be motion are we together you've heard me say if God designed for you to follow through this door and you believe that you heard him saying you should stay here and you stay with total faith and confidence so that you will not look like a liar he will remove that door and put it here you can move to the door or the door comes to you the most important thing is there must be contact between you this is the god that we serve one prayer point and we're done tonight father grant me an encounter of yourself an encounter of your ability we live in times where we need to know god we need to know God. Church, church, church thing will end up frustrating us. Believe me. Man of God, before you go and open a building and tell people, come, I know God will heal you. Make sure you know that God. Businessman, we live in a world that is full of wickedness. A habitation of cruelty. Someone pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. But I know whom I have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day the psalmist said i lay me down and i slept he said for the lord sustained me when you see men remain it is because the lord sustained them haven't obtained help from the lord he says i continue even unto this day just a few seconds in the spirit Lord, grant me grace to take my experience with you seriously. Grant me grace to love you above and beyond anything. Grant me grace to love and seek you more than money, more than titles, more than my mind, more than the philosophies of men. May I have an experience with you that supplies the staying power, the grace to push through until I emerge victorious. Exploit is my heritage in Christ, but I obtain the requisite level of encounter. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let me lend my voice with Pastor to encourage you. By the grace of God, the sessions that are coming, please. I want you to invite everyone that you find. For some of you, just hearing what you have heard now, as you were listening, the Holy Spirit began to speak to you that someone needs to hear this. You can go to the, the church YouTube page or, or all of the, the pages where this was aired and make sure that you get it to someone and tell the person, I found the key. I found the, the explanation to your vacillations in conviction. You need to stay with God until you become immovable, until you become unbendable ever abiding in the love of God hallelujah I decree and declare this is your season 
by the power that raised Christ from the dead that by this time next year you would return 10 times better in the name of Jesus Christ and every obstacle that has stood in the way sponsored by demonic powers that will not let you move I stand in the name of Jesus upon the existing grace in this house and I declare let that demonic embargo be cleared out of your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord himself grants you access to go forward he told Moses he said prophesy to the people and tell them to go forward therefore I speak to you go forward in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you